In this video, we're going to look at problems that involve using boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, or any of the colligative properties. We'll see another one that uses osmotic pressure to calculate uh, the molecular weight of an unknown. So um, in all of these problems, what you're going to see is uh, that the um, colligative property equation is going to allow us to get a concentration, and from that we're going to be able to get the number of moles. Um, and I'll explain why we need the number of moles in just a second. So to kind of start at the beginning, um, a molecular weight requires two pieces of information. It requires a mass on top in grams, and it requires a number of moles on the bottom. So the mass is going to be the mass of whatever the solute is, because that's going to be your unknown. And then the moles is going to be something that we have to get um, from the problem. So in all of these problems, you're going to see, again, like I said, uh, that we're looking for the number of moles, and that's going to come from the concentration. So let's take a look at this problem that's in front of us. Uh, the problem says uh, 0.650 grams of a non-ionizing compound is dissolved in 27.8 grams of diphenyl. The freezing point of the solution is 68.44. Then it says, calculate the molecular weight of the unknown compound if the freezing point of pure diphenyl is 70 degrees Celsius and the freezing point depression constant is 8, degree, eight degrees C per mole. So um, we know already that we have a freezing point depression um, problem in front of us because it's talking about freezing points. So let's start to dissect this problem a little bit. So the 0 0.650 grams of the non-ionizing compound, this is what we're dissolving into the, into the solution. So this is going to be our solute, the non-ionizing compound. And then our solvent, in this case, is going to be the 27.8 grams of diphenyl. So we kind of have to identify solute, solvent, what's going on. Now, if this is our unknown non-ionizing compound, this mass that we're putting in to make the solution, this is the mass uh, that we're going to be using in our... Um, molecular weight calculation. So we can kind of grab that and put that right in at the beginning because we know that when we make this solution, it's the 0 0.650 grams that's doing our colligative property. So now what we need to get from the, from the problem is the bottom part, which is the moles. So let's start to look at what we need to work with freezing point depression. So the equation for freezing point depression is that delta T of the freezing point is equal to I times KF times little m where delta T is the change in temperature of the freezing point. Oops. Um, I, is the, um, I is the Van Hoff factor that tells us um, whether, the thing is, whether the compound is breaking up into one or more things. Kf is the, um, the freezing point depression constant, and little m is the molality. So let's see what, we've, we, what we can get um, from the problem. Well, delta T we can get because we know that the pure temperature the temperature for the pure solvent is 70 degrees Celsius, and the temperature for the um, mixture is 68.44. And that makes sense because we know that it's freezing point depression, so the freezing point should go down. So we're going from 70 degrees Celsius to 68.49. So the delta T in this case is going to be 1.56 if you do the math on your calculator degrees C. So we've got a delta T, and we also have kf that the problem gives us so that's 8.00 degrees c per little m now the question is is what is the i and how do we figure that out there's one thing in this problem that you have to look for and the thing that will tell you the i is this this little phrase right here this thing says that the solute is non-ionizing so if it's not ionizing meaning it doesn't break up into ions then whatever you put in is what you get out you know um, so i in this case is going to be a one uh, now, if we said that it was an ionizing compound, um, we would have to tell you that it was a binary ionic compound. So binary would mean two ions. So you would put an, a Van Hoff factor of two. Or a ternary or, or, or a three ion compound. So you would put three. But if it's not ionizing, then it's going to be a one. So from this, we've got everything we need to solve for little m. So if you want to reorganize this equation, what we can do is we can divide both sides by I and KF, and then we get that molality is equal to uh, delta T of the freezing point over I times KF, and we plug things in, so we put 1.56 degrees C divided by 1, which is our I, times 8.00 degrees C per little m, and so then we can get our molality. So if you do the math in this case, 
This gives you 0 0.195 moles per kilogram of solvent. Now the reason why I put this explicitly, so this is little m, the reason why I put moles per kilogram of solvent is because we can now do some unit conversions to get to um, how many moles there were. So we know that there was 27.8 grams of diphenyl. So the 27.8 grams of diphenyl, this is the mass of our solvent. So if we know the mass of our solvent and we know the molality, we can get back a number of moles. So we just got to do some unit conversion. So we got to convert this to get the units to match to be in kilograms. So we're going to say for every 1,000 grams, there's one kilogram. And now we know our concentration, which is that for every one kilogram, oops, for every one kilogram, there is 0 0.195 moles. Okay, so when you, uh, when you do the math there and you multiply that out, you're going to get 0 0.005421 moles of the unknown compound. So we're using the mass of the solvent. and the, the uh, concentration to get the moles of the solute. And then this number of moles is what we're gonna put into our molecular weight equation up here. So 0 0.005421 moles. And when you do that in your calculator, you're gonna get a molecular weight equal to 120 grams per mole. So the general workflow in this problem that, that we see is um, right away you're going to get a mass or you're going to get something that's going to tell you the mass, um, which you can put into your molecular weight equation. And then the whole key of this problem is using the colligative property to get a concentration. So the first thing you got to do is you got to get a concentration. The second thing you got to do is get a number of moles. And then once you have the concentration in moles, you've got the answer to your problem. So this, this was an example of what we would do with boiling point elevation or freezing point depression. In this problem, we're going to look at how we can use osmotic pressure to come up with a molecular weight. So uh, the problem starts by saying an aqueous solution of a newly discovered anti-cancer drug is prepared in a 50 mil volumetric flask by dissolving 0.1618 grams of the drug and filling the flask to the mark. So let's just start with uh, what is a volumetric flask. Uh, a volumetric flask is a flask, it kind of looks like this, it's not a great picture, but it's got a mark at the top. And when you fill to the mark, um, then you know that your solution volume is equal to the 50 mils. And this is important because when we're dealing with molarity, we're dealing with the uh, moles per volume of solution. So we use a volumetric flask when we're dealing with molarity because when we fill to that mark, we know exactly what our solution volume is. So let's take a look at the problem itself. It says, calculate the molecular weight of the drug if the osmotic pressure of the solution was determined to be 297 millimeters of mercury at 21 degrees Celsius. So like we started our molecular weight problem in the, in the previous video, or in the previous question, I should say, uh, we need two things. We need to know the mass, and we need to know the number of moles. So in this case, the mass is going to be 0 0.1618 grams, and then we have to figure out the number of moles um, from our problem. So uh, in this case, we have our colligative property, which is uh, osmotic pressure, pi is equal to mRT. And let's start to figure out things that we know. So what we know is we know that we have um, our temperature, which is equal to 21 degrees Celsius. So we're automatically going to convert that to Kelvin by adding 273.15. So that's going to give us 294.15 Kelvin. We know our osmotic pressure, which in this case, they give it to us in millimeters of mercury, 297 millimeters of mercury. So we're gonna divide that by 760 millimeters of mercury for every one ATM. And the reason why we have to get this in ATM is because of R, which is the gas constant, which is liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So this is gonna be 0.391 atmospheres. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to just reorganize this to get m. So we're going to get m is equal to pi over rt. And uh, then we're going to plug in. So we're going to get 0 0.391 atmospheres 
divided by 294.15 Kelvin times the gas constant, which is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And this is going to give us a concentration of uh, 0 0.0162 moles per liter. Now, in order to get the number of moles, we have to use our concentration uh, and the volume to get a number of moles. So we have 50 mils, 50.0 mils is our solution volume. So we're going to convert this to liters. So for every 1,000 mils, there's one liter. And then um, we're going to use our concentration, which is a 0, 0. Uh, for every one liter, there's 0 0.0162 moles. And this is going to give us the number of moles of 8.09 times 10 to the minus 4 moles, which we can then plug in up here. So for the number of moles, we're going to put 8.09 times 10 to the minus 4 moles on the bottom. And when we do our division, that's going to give us 200 grams per mole. So again, uh, the first thing we're doing is we're getting our concentration. The second thing we're doing is getting our moles, and then we're using that to calculate our final answer, which is 200 grams per mole. In the last problem, we're going to look at um, using... Um, we're going to look at how we can also frame a question. This one is not a molecular weight problem, but it's another good way of framing a um, colligative properties question. So it says the drug is extracted from the leaf of a plant into water and is then concentrated to 1.28 molar. Calculate the freezing point of the solution if the density of the solution is 1.128 grams per mil and the Kf for water is 1.858 degrees Celsius per mole. So uh, the, the problem is basically setting up to be a um, freezing point depression problem. It says calculate the freezing point of the solution, and then it gives us some information about the concentration. So we get delta T is equal to I Kf times little m. So in the end, this is what we have to be working with. So let's see if we can start to fill out some of these things. Well, the Kf is an easy one. So that one's going to be um, 1.858 degrees C per little m. So the I is another question. Um, what we have to do is we have to go back and look at the problem and see if we can get any information about I. And the place you're going to want to look is right here. So the solution does not conduct electricity. Uh, that basically tells us that this is a non-electrolyte, so it's not forming ions. So the I is going to be 1. Um, that's how we know that. So if it's a non-electrolyte, it doesn't conduct electricity, it's not breaking up into ions, so we get 1. Now here's the problem with this. Um, it gives us a concentration of 1.28 molar, which is 1.28 moles per liter of solution. Now the problem is, is we got to get this into molality, which is moles per kilogram of solvent. Um, because little m is molality. So um, we're going to have to do a, a conversion from uh, molarity to molality. So what we can do is we can grab our moles and just bring those right over. If we assume that we have one liter of solution. And the reason for that is because if we have one liter of solution, then we have 1.28 moles. So how can we get the uh, kilograms of the solvent? Well, they give us the density. So if we have one liter of solution, um, and we convert that to milliliters, so if we take one liter and we say that there's a thousand mils, um, we can then use the density to go um, from, so for every one mil, there's 1.128 grams. So this is going to give us a mass of the solution of um, 1,128 grams. So this is going to equal the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. Uh, because we know that this is the volume of the solution, so it's got to be both things combined. So we have, in order to get the mass of the solvent, we have to get the mass of the solute. So to do that, we're going to take our 1.28 moles, and we're going to use the molecular weight that we figured out in the first part of the problem, so 200 grams for every one mole, and then we're going to get a mass. So we're going to get a mass of 256 grams of the solute, which we can plug in up here. And then if we solve this, the mass of the solvent... Uh, if we take 1128 grams minus 256, the difference between those two is the mass of the solvent, and that is 872 grams. 
Um, so what we can do is we can then plug this in up here as 0 0.872 kilograms. So I divided this by 1,000 in order to get it into kilograms. So uh, 872 grams is 0.872 kilograms. So then we can get the molality. We can take the 1.28 divided by the 0.872, and that gives us 1.47 little m, or molal, which we can then bring over here. And then we can get our delta T, which is equal to 2.73 degrees C. So now there's one thing that's left. Um, this is the delta T. This is not actually the freezing point, which is what the problem is asking for. It says calculate the freezing point of this solution. So to get the freezing point, we have to know what the, the freezing temperature is of the pure solution. So that's going to be zero degrees Celsius. Now on the exam, we would give this to you, but you should know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius at this point. And it's a freezing point depression, so the temperature has got to go down. It depresses, it goes down. So we're going to subtract the minus 2.73 degrees Celsius, and that's going to give us negative 2.73 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be the final answer for that problem. So this problem is a good example of how we can throw a, 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 a concentration conversion at you um, and then use that as, as part of a freezing point depression or an osmotic pressure problem, um, and then you can kind of mix those two things together.